Frequent Miler on the air begins now. <laughs> How's it going, Nick? <laughs> great, great. Things are good. How about you, Greg? How are things in uh, Michigandia or Michigan land or Michi- whatever yeah. you call it? <laughs> <laughs> Michigan land's good. Um, <laughs> I get a email once a month from Google Maps because I enabled this like location and follow oh, feature yeah. and it shows me where I've been in the past uh, month and um, finally it showed some activity because of my trip up north. <laughs> <laughs> Getting an email showing that I've been to like two places in Ann Arbor was kind of <laughs> You know, that's funny you mentioned that because I got that too and it was really mm-hmm. creepy because last week I, I Googled a restaurant to see if it was open or what the hours were or something like that. And I found that it had closed a few years ago, but Google let me know that I was last there four years ago. <laughs> Gave me the date. It knows. Yeah. yeah. They know where I am. They're following. <laughs> Absolutely. So today's main event is going to be about Amex Clubax. You know all about that. Um, but I'm actually, that's a, that's a cool topic, but I'm kind of excited that we're also going to introduce a new segment. To that's right. Show. So we're going to do a new regular segment that we need a name for, but the, the topic is mattress running, right? Right, right. It's, it's, uh, the idea is we're going to look at a, a recent or new hotel promotion and say, is this mattress one run worthy? Meaning, is it worth going to that hotel, checking in just for the, either the points you earn or the elite nights or whatever it is that, that the promo helps with, right? Sure. <clears throat> so, uh, looking forward to that, and maybe readers can suggest names. You know, uh, chat with us either through YouTube or email or whatever forum you uh, you usually contact us with, uh, uh, or contact us as is a link on on our uh, website. And yeah, you can let send us, us know if you have there. a good idea. Yeah, yeah, if you have a good name for Catchy that segment. Name. That, that would be cool, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would. So, mattress running for miles or, uh, you know, frequent mattress running. or I don't know. You right. have to come up with something better than that, obviously. <laughs> exactly. It has to be so, right. something better than Nick or I can possibly come up with. And right. then you win. What do they win? <laughs> I get, that's a good question. <laughs> Honor. Bra- bragging Honor rights. and bragging rights. That's right. Yes. They get a mention on the show. There you go. Which, you know, like potential advertisers would pay, like, Millions probably for that Mill- honor. Millions and of tenths of a cent. <laughs> <laughs> maybe not that much, but yeah, somewhere in that range, maybe. Okay, so <laughs> so that brings us to feedback time. Reader feedback, our favorite right. segment. Always like to hear favorite what segment, which say. I'm not going to do. I, I have the sole judgment here of okay what to do for feedback time, you and do. sometimes you I decide. Sometimes I decide. Meh, not going to do feedback. Uh, Now, sometimes in the past, what I've done instead is confession time. Everybody's favorite. Which is always popular, but I don't have a confession to give. No confession. Instead, instead I've got got a story. Oh, a story time. It relates relates to the mattress run segment, so that's why I'm going to tell the story. Well, my son loves story time, so maybe I'll toss on the podcast for him this weekend. There you go. Once (laughs) upon a time, I'll tell it like this. Okay. Sounds good. So, all right. Once upon a time, I wanted to book another stay at my favorite Hyatt in the world, the Ventana Big Sur. Mm. And it just so happened that there was a temporary, I think, bug in the system that let us book suites online with points because that's not normally something you could do with points. So I grabbed a- You can normally, to to, to interrupt, you can normally book suites with points, but not usually online. Exactly, exactly. So it's not like I got away with something that I couldn't have done easily through the Hyatt Concierge on Twitter or some other means like calling, but uh, it was nice and convenient to be able to book a suite uh, online um, for the near the end of August. Okay. So then a while later, Mm -hmm. I've been plugging away at one of the Hyatt promotions, which was the earn three elite nights per $5,000 spend instead of the usual two elite nights per 5,000 spend. That's on the and newer I, I was, World of Hyatt credit card, not the old one, right? That's a good point. On the World mm-hmm. of Hyatt credit card. And it was for, I think, the months of May and June spend during those months, got that perk. And I was plugging away at that because 
uh, I had determined, decided I was going to go for a globalist status this year. Of course, I had decided that before all this stuff happened, but. <laughs> <laughs> but what, once, you, um, once you commit, you can't go back. I, right? I'm committed, right, <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so, so anyway, so, you know, I was progressing, moving up, getting more and more nights on there. And, and uh, I hit the 50 nights where you get the uh, milestone benefit of two sweet upgrade awards. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I was like, hmm, wouldn't it be nice if instead of spending the 48,000 points per night for my Hyatt stay, I could spend the standard room rate of 30,000 points a night and apply my sweet upgrade. Wouldn't that be cool? Wouldn't that be nice? I mean, that would. In an ideal world, that would be one. You get 18,000 points a night back. Is that what you're telling me? That's, that was the goal, right? Right. Now, right. I mean, the of course problem, that would be nice. Okay. But the, but there's so a the problem is, there's a wrinkle. The problem is that standard rooms booked for uh, wards were not available during my stay. In fact, before anyone tries, standard room awards are not available <laughs> uh, through end of schedule as far as I know. Because, and I know this because lots of readers have reached out to me saying, how in the world do you find awards on, in this hotel? Um, because they never seem to be available. Well, that's true because it's a very small property. And it's a very desirable property. People like Frequent Miler and One Mile at a Time have written about how great of a property <laughs> it is. And so a lot of people have jumped on and booked it up. So, of course, it's very hard to get those standard rooms. The good news for you, if you're looking and you have a lot of Hyatt points, is that sweet nights aren't that hard to grab. And they're not that hard because they've stopped being available online. And so a lot of people just don't even bother when they can't find those awards online. So if you call Hyatt or contact Hyatt Concierge through Twitter, they, they should be able to tell you whether any sweet night awards are, are available. Sweet nights will cost 48,000 points a night. Premium sweet night will cost 60,000 points per night, which is a lot of points, but it's also a outrageously fantastic property like if you could afford that many points, it's actually, I'd say, well worth it. I mean, well, and, and, and now it's like all inclusive, right? <laughs> and now it's all inclusive, right? Which happened oh. between the time when I booked and, and now. So, yeah, so it got better. Like the value of it got better. Right. Um, including think, what the standard rates are. Like, right, you right. Know, Those standard so rates are like 1500 bucks a night, 1600 bucks a night plus tax ex now, right? Exactly, exactly. And before you were looking at more like uh, 850 to 1000 or more. Um, so it definitely went up by quite a bit and yet the point rate hasn't gone up. So anyway, so, so I couldn't book, I couldn't do what I wanted by, by myself. I couldn't book a standard room and then apply a suite upgrade to, in order to pay only 30,000 points instead of 48. So what I did, I reached out to the Hyatt concierge Twitter team, told them what I, what I wanted to do. And at, they explained exactly what I just said. Well, the way to do it is book a standard room, but there aren't any available. So I said, could you reach out to the hotel and could, and could you ask them if they could make a standard room available just for this purpose? Because the end result will be, I'll be in the same, I'll be booked into the same suite I'm already booked in. And so they don't really have to open up any room availability. They just sort of have to do it in the computer just for this purpose. And the answer was, well, we don't usually do that, but we'll give it a try. We're happy to give it a try and we'll let you know. And uh, probably about a day later, boom. boom. And I, I got a, a big credit of points in my account. Um, 18,000 points exactly a night back. Back, yeah. Woo! And uh, <laughs> it's, it's exactly what I wanted. You know, I, I, I have the suite, confirmed suite, using one of those two suite upgrades I got. Um, so if you think about how valuable sweet upgrades are, this is an example where, I mean, it was a four night stay. It could have been up to, I think it's six nights. That, I don't know. I don't know off the top of my head. How, seven nights. Seven nights that they could mm -hmm. be up to. But anyway, I'll take, uh, 18,000 times four, uh, you know, every, every day of the week. Would. And that's just for one of those sweet upgrades. So, right, right. That's a so, one of those sweet upgrades. And then obviously yeah. we're going to get into this later, but now you stand to get another 25% back, 
potentially, right? Exactly. Get- so, so I, so I read Stephen's post about this uh, very carefully. So the new promo says Hyatt card holders get 25% back for stays that end by October 8th, I think it is. Um, and it, it, the, it implied that you had to book it between now and then, um, which I can't really do. Like, I don't want to risk trying this whole process again. Right. But he went further into the terms and conditions and found that, like, they were counting the, the time when you check out as sort of like the time at which the points are used as opposed to the time you booked it okay. as the time the points are used. And, and so he believes, and, and I believe his logic, that my existing reservation will work. And he says that previous promotions like this existing reservations have worked. So, so I think he's right. And so that's great. I mean, right. that's like icing on the cake as like, yeah. holy cow, I'm <laughs> getting another, you know, whatever, uh, f- uh 25% of, of 30,000 30, per night. Yeah. So, so 7,500 points back, right? Another 7,500 per night times four. So you're looking at, you know, another 30,000 back, right? Nice. <laughs> so, that's a 90,000 points for four nights in a suite that's all inclusive at a property that goes for fifteen or $1,600 a night. I mean, that's, that's not a bad deal. You've done well, Greg. It's, <laughs> thank you. It's not a bad deal at all. So this is one of those things that we decided not to write about because we don't want the uh, Hyatt Twitter team getting bombarded with these kind of requests and, and, and everything. But but if you have uh, any sweet night awards, you know it's something to keep in uh, keep in mind as a as something that might work. Obviously, it wouldn't necessarily work, and it's up to the property being willing to do this one off thing. So, you, so right. there's like two people that have to be willing to work for you, right? The, right. the Hyatt team and the property, um, and you have to have sweet night awards. So that combination, maybe there's not that many listeners that have that combination. I don't know, um, but as a general rule, trying to find Hyatt award availability, this trick of booking suites instead of standard rooms is a really good uh, trick to know. And now we know there's at least a potential way to go back to the standard room rate, which is just incredible. Right. And, you know, is it going to continue to work on this specific property forever? Who knows? You know, like Greg said, part of the reason we didn't write about it is so that they didn't get, you know, a thousand of these requests all at once and then shut that down. But, you know, if you have another property you're staying at, it's worth taking a swing at that. And it's another good reminder that you you get 0% of the things you don't ask for. And, you know, really it didn't take Greg anything to ask and, it's just a message on Twitter and the worst they were going to say is no, they can't do that. And and the best that they were going to say was 80,000 points for you. So, uh, you know, pretty nice outcome to get that 80,000 points. (laughs) It was worth an ask. (laughs) 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 It was worth an ask. I mean, especially when you look at it and you say right now that's $1,200 worth of points, you cash out at the grocery store for asking a question on Twitter. I mean, worth it. All right. So that's, so that's feedback time. Okay. Uh, the non-feedback so, feedback time. And that brings us to our next regular segment. It does. What crazy thing did City do this week? What, what has City done this week, Greg? And this segment is brought to you by First National Bank of Omaha. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, but, but we should probably have a different bank sponsor every week for the what I crazy would, thing did City do this week. Huh? I would love that. Um, <laughs> We should, hey, let's start just making up bank names. Each right. Time. There you go. <laughs> so, this, this, this week's segment is brought to you by Fifth Second Bank. And, uh, you know what? This, this week, we have to, instead of, instead of making fun of City, I think we have to make fun of Chase. And, and, a, little bit, and a little bit ourselves. Because okay. last week, when we were doing our routine making fun of Citibank, we were making fun of again how they waited forever to let readers know about their promotions. And like, I think when we stopped recording, maybe, or maybe it was the next day, <laughs> um, we learned about how, and oh, wait, wait well, let me back up. All right, back we up. Used, we, I, used, I, I specifically used Chase as an example of like Bank Who Did It Right. Like they, they not Has only sent out the information. Yeah, they have right. it together. They email their customers. They have a web page that shows all these promotions. Phone reps they've, know what's going on. They've 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 Things got it work. down. We, we we told City you need to like take a page from Chase and see what's going on. Uh-huh. Boy, do we feel dumb about that, <laughs> or at least I do. 
because <laughs> Fair enough. it was because while we were chatting about that, Chase was busy giving cardholders 5X at restaurants for, with their Sapphire Reserve and 3X with their Sapphire Preferred, both of which are not regular earning amounts, both of which were not advertised anywhere as promotions and appears to have been, I guess, a bug because they stopped doing it, right? Right. So, right. Just, you know, kind of came and, and went <laughs> in the night without any kind of a message or, or note or anything. And so it does seem that it must have been a glitch because yeah. they did take it right back away. We thought initially maybe it got lumped in with the gas station deal somehow and had a you know, shared the $1,500 cap with the gas station deal. Maybe somebody flipped a switch wrong on the, you know, the, the computer side of things. But as it turned out, we had at least one reader who reported spending more than $1,500 at restaurants in the first few days of the month and, and got the 5X on the entire spend. So it doesn't even seem that it was capped, uh, but they did cut it off pretty quickly. So Chase is the one doing the crazy thing this week in giving everybody an unadvertised and probably unintended 5X at restaurants. Do you think they'll claw those points back? Because it, it does seem like it must have been a glitch. Do you think they'll claw them back? Yeah, as you're asking that, I'm trying to, I'm trying to remember what Chase has done in the past with things like this, but I can't really remember... I can't remember situation where like they this. accidentally gave people more points. I'd be inclined to think they'll just let it go rather than I think I think that I Chase think. is more likely to err on the side of keeping their customers happy than I think. I think you're right. <laughs> so Probably. we'll see. <laughs> yeah. We'll I'm sure yeah. we'll hear. We'll hear one way or another. I don't have any I don't have any of those five X um, you know charges earnings in order to uh test it myself do you no no i don't i haven't been using the sapphire reserve at restaurants because i still haven't quite used up my aspire credits so or maybe i have now but it was over the mm -hmm. weekend i i ate and i saw that that entire charge came off so i must have something left still on that so uh so no i haven't pulled out the sapphire reserve yet at a restaurant i was intending to pull it out at gas stations uh, in the relatively near future here to, as in my case, to buy gift to college gift cards at a gas station chain in upstate New York. But yep. now I'm not so confident that that's what I'm going to do because of course Marriott's going to be out here with a promotion <laughs> to earn at gas that's stations. Right. At least we think. Starting another, on the 15th, July yeah, another 15th. Crazy thing that Chase has done is they sent that information out to all the bloggers with a link for people to register <laughs> that doesn't work. <laughs> that's true <laughs> chase did you hire someone from city <laughs> like did you hire the city it team i mean i'm sure they were cheaper but come on now chase like <laughs> cost cost that, savings measures here yeah that situation's been bad i mean so uh steven got the first announcement i think it was like on sunday and and he immediately he tried to register his card so it didn't work so he he said well let's wait to publish this instead of confusing people because it's still over a week away that it goes live. And so uh, I thought that was a good call. And then, um, but some people published it anyway and, and I guess didn't realize that it was broken. And then Marriott made another push of like PR emails and everything. Right. And so so we assumed, oh, maybe it maybe it's live now. And we tested it. Nope, still wasn't, well, li still wasn't we working. We got it's live, like there's a website. We have emails from both Marriott and Chase on that. Like that's right. That's right. <laughs> from both PR teams. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't work. Well, it, yeah, yeah. Well, at least you did. I mean, I Marriott Marriott's reps don't like me anymore. They won't. <laughs> they won't email me no matter what. Stop. They're like that guy. He's you know too much trouble. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think there was one too many negatives. I don't know. I don't know what I. Did. He but keeps I, asking questions. <laughs> we got to keep answering them. They just right. cut Greg off. But for some reason, they send me the info still. Yeah, that's true. They're probably like if he asks one more question about that Ritz <laughs> card, card he's <laughs> out of here you're out of here go home Greg <laughs> no more emails so, but but we had an impact because the the Marriott PR announcement about this promotion the 10x gas and restaurants right right um <laughs> actually listed the Ritz card as a as an eligible card which sure did. in the past they never bothered to mention Ritz. Oh, that, that was so, for you, Greg. That was, it was for us, yeah. Said, you yeah. know what, we're not going to email him. And even if he hears about it, we're not going to get an email from him. <laughs> right. <laughs> Cut you right off by putting the Ritz card in there. Yeah, so so hopefully that will work because I'm I'm pretty excited about that, especially 
because I was intending to buy some gift to college cards anyway. And 10X, I'll take the 10X. I, I'll take the 5X on the Sapphire Reserve for my actual gas for the next few months too. But either way, Sapphire Reserve, I haven't pulled it out at a, a restaurant lately and I'm not sure when I will again because only 3X just doesn't seem very good right now. <laughs> right. And if anyone hasn't noticed that we have a, a COVID credit card enhancements guide on the site, it's already been updated with this 10X promotion. So you can see side by side what the reasonable redemption values of 10X Marriott compared to 5X Chase compared to whatever else. So that's really helpful because I, I know a lot of people have that question. Sure. Is 10X Marriott better than 5X, you know? Ultimate well, awards. Know, let's answer uh, it's a very valid question. To answer. What do you think? I mean, I know that we're kind of getting off on a tangent here now mm. with what crazy thing did City do and, and kind of getting into a topic to talk about. But, but I, I think it's a, worth asking that question. What do you think? Is it worth spending on the Marriott card at 10X? Because I obviously just indicated that I plan to do it. What do you right. think? Is that a bad decision? Um, no, I don't think it's a bad decision. I, I, think, I think that the, the, you know, the value is uh, roughly in the, in the same ballpark. 10x Marriott versus uh, you know 5x Ultimate Rewards. I, I I don't I don't think I would have a strong uh, preference one way or another of those two. I'll tell you why I have a strong preference. The cap on the yeah. Marriott cards is thirty five hundred dollars, and I have the old Marriott card that ordinarily mm -hmm. only earns one point per dollar, and it gets an Elite Night for every three thousand. Ooh, spent. so I'm gonna pick up an Elite nice. Night also on the way. So I right. figure between the Elite Night and the ten thousand points, or thirty five thousand points, because the cap is thirty five hundred, and and that that's an amount that pretty much you know follows with what we were intending to toss in the uh, the college savings account at least to start. So. Uh, so 35,000 points on an elite night, I'll take it. Yeah, no, and not only that, I think from, from reading the announcement that we should be able to register multiple, if we have multiple so. Chase Marriott cards, I think you could register them each, and so you should have a 3,500 cap on each one, each one. which most right. people aren't going to have more than one Sapphire Reserve card. So, right. you know, th right. uh, for at least some of us, this means a lot more capacity of a great return on gas station spend. And if you have a place that sells gift cards, so much the better. And uh, as we'll get into soon after, after our mattress run segment, um, one of the nice things about it being Chase cards is Chase has not been uh, clawing back these kind of bonuses <laughs> the way that Amex has done. So right. we'll get to that We'll get back soon, there. But Okay, but so first, so first, first we should slide forward into the mattress run segment. So whatever it is you guys are going to call the mattress run segment, ladies and gentlemen, here it is, Frequent Milers Mattress Running, or the better name that you're going to come up with for next week. So mattress running this week, we got to talk about the Hyatt promo. So you wrote a post all about this Hyatt promo. Is it worth mattress running or in status? Does it move the needle on booking Hyatt awards? Does it mean that now is the time to apply for Hyatt cards? So tell us about the promo and tell us what you think. Sure. Yeah. So uh, people, so this one is, is kind of interesting because they uh, it's not exclusively to Hyatt card holders. That is, if you don't have the Hyatt card, you still get a 15% rebate on awards and you get free parking at um, any Hyatt where you can charge the parking to the hotel. Um, Which, by the also, way, is huge in some places. For those of you who may not think about it right away, and of course, I doubt New York City is going to be a hot tourist destination right now. But man, <laughs> exactly. you know, that's a place where that benefit has come invaluable for me as a globalist in the past and would certainly in a normal world be valuable uh, here because, you know, like 70 or 80 bucks a night to park, especially if you drive an SUV uh, and you can charge that to the room, that can be a great value in cities where parking is expensive. So that, that's right. Right. Maybe, maybe it's worth, uh, I don't know how much uh, parking at airports are but at like JFK, but you know, maybe it's worth like booking a Hyatt somewhere <laughs> that's accessible to JFK. Right. <laughs> and, I mean, it might be. Uh, with points because you'll right. get a rebate on that and then you'll get free parking and just leave your car there instead of yourself. <laughs> <laughs> I guess, I mean, you'd have to see. Maybe, maybe it's worthwhile. <laughs> you gotta be paying for it every night, you know, in points, It'll stretch, but, but not right. necessarily. No, I, yeah, you know. yeah. It would, I don't think there's any category one Hyatt's anywhere not. near, no, not uh, near JFK, JFK probably. No. no, not really. Anyways, um, so the, the, the other aspect, if you have the, the World of Hyatt card, you're getting a 25% rebate. And this is on, on any awards that end by October 8th, I believe. Yeah. 
And the um, start date on that is July 15th. Is um, that right? Mm, I can't remember what the start okay. date is. You'll check the uh, post for it. The link's going to be in the description. There you go. So uh, one of the really interesting things about this to me is that it's not just a rebate on award stays. So you get a rebate on other things like what they call find experiences and um, their uh, dining and dining and spa and other <laughs> awards um, and a few other things. But, but uh, I was intrigued because I remember when, when they revamped these dining and spa and dining and more awards, if you spent a thousand dollars at a Hyatt property and you want to use, redeem points for that, it was something like, <laughs> wish I could remember off the top of my head, but I want to say 64,000 points, something, 60 something thousand points. Yep. And it worked oh, out to a value of a little over one and a half cents per point, about 1.54. Which so that is was not like, bad. Which is not bad at all. I'm, you know, just like we're willing to uh, use ultimate rewards for that much value, I, I'm certainly willing to, to apply Hyatt points for that much value if I can get it. I mean, you can kind so of turn your hotel stay into an all-inclusive by just charging stuff to the room and then using points to erase it at the end. You know, it's exactly, exactly. Um, so now it means you're, you know, if you have the, the 25% rebate, uh, you're getting, you know, some of those 60-some thousand points back and it works out, the math works out to over two cents per point value. Now so suddenly it goes good. from, right, suddenly it goes from a not bad to, that's actually really good. For high points, yeah. I mean, that's for, great. For high points, yeah, yeah. Um, now, you can do better with uh, the value for booking an award at a, at a property that where like it costs the, like, a like lot more. Like the Ventana more than, Big Sur. Than, than the points. <laughs> <laughs> Ventana Big Sur is a, a great example. But, I mean, there's lots of mid-range ones or, or low-end right. ones that are also will give you much better than two cents value, especially now with this rebate. Sure. But the average value of Hyatt uh, stays tends to be about one and a half cents per point. And so you have a very similar dynamic here that whether you're using the, the points and this, uh, and this 25% rebate for, for nights or for these other things, you're still getting about two cents per point value on average. You know, the, again, the room rate is just going to depend on the, how much did the room cost and how many points is it as to what you're really going to get. But that's why I say on average, you'll get that. So, um, so I was kind of excited, sort of theoretically excited about this idea of like, wow, yeah, I could turn a, uh, like you said, I could turn a, a regular stay into an all inclusive stay, or I could have a, uh, like, a dining and spa day at a, at a nice Hyatt. You don't even have to be in state. You don't have to stay there to, to use it. So if yeah. um, my wife and I wanted to go have like a luxury all day, you know, meals and spa and everything. But then like reality hit as I thought about this. <laughs> <laughs> so it sounded really exciting, but then. Like, well, so first of all, this is like COVID time, right? I mean, I'm not. <laughs> that, of so, that I am aware. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, you noticed. Yeah. I, I, so, I have noticed that. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for bringing us back to reality with that. Right. Yes. So, so, I mean, like, if I was really going to do something like what I just said. You wouldn't want to be wearing a mask? No, I mean, it would, <laughs> in, in pre-COVID world, I'd be talking about like, having a, a, like maybe a stay in New York city for a weekend and going to plays and, and, and right. taking time to do spa and, and like a, a great dinner at the, if there was a, you know, the park Hyatt or wherever probably has a nice restaurant there. Sure. Uh, and uh, they probably have a nice spa. I'm guessing, I don't know, or Chicago or DC or somewhere like it's somewhere that I'm just not going to go to right now. Right. <laughs> right. And I'm not going to go to before October 8th, you yeah. know? So, so the reality sunk in is like, there's just no way I'm going to be spending a thousand dollars in one shot at a Hyatt. Like, I mean, that's, that's why they're offering it right now. <laughs> that's why try, they're offering it right try now. try to entice you to do that, but they know that right. not, I assume right. they know that not many people are going to do it. Um, but that doesn't mean I won't be willing to book more stays. Like, so, you know, I've, I've thought about things like, wow, I've really wanted to go to a Miraval property. Those are also mostly all-inclusive, um, 
and uh, but they're crazy expensive with Hyatt points. Mm-hmm. So there, there's something like forty eight thousand or forty five thousand for one person per night, and you add twenty thousand uh, for the other person. Uh, so with this deal, though, it brings it down into something somewhat manageable and and um, not as great of a deal as the Ventana, but not you know not an order of magnitude different. Um, right. <clears throat> And so, uh, so yeah, so that, I, I find that pretty darn interesting. Um, but I, you know, the closest, I, I'm still not interest excited about flying and we are going to fly out to California for Ventana visit, but, you know, I'd rather drive on other trips And the closest one is that one in, uh, I think it's in Massachusetts, it is, at, yeah. that new brand new one. It opens July 15th. Very close to a Simon Mall, by the way. <laughs> it is. It's like an eleven-hour drive for me, yeah. and and yeah, uh, maybe, maybe, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, it's less than two hours for me, but I, I, I'm, I'm still like, like you said, I don't know. I'm, I'm still in COVID time, where I'm, I'm like, do I really want to spend that many points on a vacation that it should be relaxing. I don't know if it's going to feel as relaxing. So yeah, I don't know if I really yeah. want to blow that many points on a vacation where I'm going to be half thinking the whole time, did that massage therapist just cough? <laughs> you know, I, don't, <laughs> I don't really want that. So I, I, I don't think I'm going to probably take advantage of this one at all. Definitely kind of intrigued, especially, you know, the 15%, even for non-card holders, 15% mm-hmm. back is still pretty darn good. It you know, is. It really is. That's, that's not a bad deal. And if you can stack that, maybe I haven't even looked at stacking this, but I would assume you can stack it with the, uh, the points you can get for booking one of the new properties on the the list of new properties. I haven't checked to see what's on that list lately, but I've checked a bunch of times before and there's been lots of different properties where you can get 500 points a night or something like that back. I uh, add that on top there's, of this. There's also a promo going on where you get 2,500 points on your first stay. Oh, if you have any kind of elite status, elite status on your you first go. stay. And then, um, then you get <laughs> get something else on on oh you get extra points on on future stays so it doesn't help with this because you won't get any points on award stays and, that, um, and that's how effective the marketing promotions are right now that even people who write about these promotions are saying hey you get something back in the second one i, I don't know what it is but it's some i think they got a promo going uh, they're giving you a point i don't know <laughs> I mean, that's how excited we all are, I feel like. Right, right. right. Points for these days. So I I think that it sounds really intriguing. And when I started reading the post you were writing, I was like, oh, wow, that's awesome. Two cents a point. That's pretty good, especially if you got a lot of high points on hand, turn your stay into an all-inclusive, blah, blah, blah. But then, like you said, I was like, well, I'm not flying anywhere. And there's not a Hyatt that I'm particularly excited about going to drive-wise. The Miraval would be the only one, maybe. And that's just probably not the cards. So. Okay. Uh, so yeah, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do this one, but I think that if somebody is planning to stay at a Hyatt during that time, and surely there are some people who are going to take vacations this summer, I know people have been doing it, then, you know, it certainly can be worthwhile. So Absolutely. if you are someone who is already looking at, maybe you already have a reservation at Ventana Big Star or one of these other Hyatt resorts in the U.S. that are higher end places that are costing, you know, 25 or 30 or 40,000 points a night or something like that is it worth getting the Hyatt credit card for that extra 10% back? Because if you don't have the card, you get 15% back. If you do have the card, you get 25% back. Is it worth going after the Hyatt card for the difference? Yeah. Well, you know, the Hyatt card's, a, I think, a, a good card to get in general. I mean, obviously, it you have to be under Chase's 524 rule. So you have to have not signed up for five or more cards in the past 24 months in order to be eligible to get it. Uh, and... It will take up a slot. So if you're if you're trying to get under 524, um, if you get approved, you know that's going to add one to your count, and so that could be a problem. But uh, in general, I think it's a solid card uh, to get in general. And now what it means is exactly as you put it that like only if you already have plans for an award stay with Hyatt does it mean the card is then giving you even more points than the welcome bonus. Right. right. So if you have, if you have, um, no, it's 10,000 more, it's 10% 10% more more. back than you'd get without having the card. So the math is actually pretty easy with this one. If if you have 200,000 points 
of award stays planned, you're going to get 20,000 points back that you wouldn't have gotten without the credit card. And so it could very well be worth it. The, the FAQ for, for the Hyatt promotion um, says, yes, you can get the card even after the promotion begins. But then the wording makes it sound like you have to register for the promotion after getting the card. I, that might have just been poorly worded, uh, you know, how they wrote that answer. But if you think you might be getting the card, I'd say just hold off on registering for the promotion until you, get, until the you get the card, card just to be safe. And uh, for everybody else, don't forget to register because it is one where you're not going to get the rebate if you don't register. And you got to register by um, like September 1st or something like that. The deadline is before the promotion ends. So you want to make sure that you, if you're not planning to get the card anew, you want to make sure you register as soon as you can. I think yeah. it always makes sense to register for promotions like this as soon as they come out, even if you don't think you're going to use it because you never know when you're going to get stuck somewhere overnight and you have to get a hotel and you might as well get all the points back you can. So right, you right. register for that now. Or you, re you realize that you're going to have a stay after the registration period exactly. is over. Yep. And, and uh, yeah, that, then that's too bad. Yep. Yep. So um, definitely make sure you do that. Yeah. So uh, we, we, we didn't really talk about what this segment is supposed to be all about, which is, is it, is it worth mattress running? So if you're going for elite status with Hyatt, is it, does this promotion make it worthwhile to uh, check into a, Category one hotel, it's normally 5,000 points. With the 25% rebate, it becomes 3,750 points per night. Should you take advantage of that and get your nights that way? I mean, I, I guess it depends on how many nights you're going to be short by the end of the year. Uh, I, you know, it's one of those things. Yes, that's much cheaper than paying 5,000. So if you're going to otherwise pay 5,000 points a night at the end of the year, then yeah, I guess you should. If you're not sure where you're going to be, well, then maybe I'd book some of those 5,000 point nights towards like the end of the promotion, early October to use up just in case. Uh, but, it, you know, would it get me to go out there and mattress run just to get status? It depends on how many nights you're going to be short of status. You know, and and I, I wanted to mention, by the way, that they finally did send an email on this because I had heard about this via the affiliate channels or whatever, but I hadn't actually seen something from Hyatt, but I, I have seen a few emails now that if you sign up for that card now, and I can't remember when the end date is on this, but you do get 10 elite nights uh, this year. So I was curious about that. How long that that's for the whole year that you think? I well, can't remember anyway, when it look at our website. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully our website. we'll update we'll that, that on, on there. Yep. the, uh, uh, we should put page. it right on the card page, right? We should. Yeah. We should. Right. Yep. So, okay. so that can get you a little bit closer. I don't. I mean, you're already there, so you don't need any extra nights, right? I don't need it, but you know. So speaking in general, I actually think that most people. So the scenario was you're getting 25 percent back, so that suggests that you already have the card, right? And if you already have the World of Hyatt card, I actually think you're better off manufacturing spend on that card and getting the so Two every nights. every five thousand. Dollar spend gets you two nights. Um, uh, you know, if if for some reason you're you're uh, you just don't have any ability to manufacture spend, then then yes, I mean you're right. If you're if you're close to getting the level of status you want, and ideally that level of status is globalist because that's that's the biggest jump in value, right? Mm -hmm. um, if you're close to getting globalist, yeah, I mean, it's it's certainly cheaper to use this, to get extra nights through this promotion than not, but I, I think that manufacturing it through the credit card spend is even cheaper. Yeah, I mean, that makes sense, especially if you look at options, like even Simon, which is relatively expensive, if you're buying online, you're talking $4 a card with the promo right now, like, well, like $3 a card, right? And then you take uh, the $10 fee and say, hey, if you're buying five of them at a time, it's going to cost you... At six dollars a card times five to thirty dollars in costs up front, and then whatever your liquidation cost is, let's say it costs you another two dollars per thousand, maybe forty dollars will cost you to manufacture that much spend uh, and get two elite nights. So, in that case, I don't think it's worth spending the points to mattress run. But if you want to ease up your manufactured spending, if you don't have as much of it available to you right now, it might be worth a couple of nights to get to Globalist. Or even I think, you know, Explorers gets a bad rap because there's not a lot of benefits there. And I'm not going to argue that there's a lot. But if I were only two nights short of Explorist, for instance, 
I'd probably mattress run that at a category one. Take my two yeah. games back out. I think so. I think, I think so. so. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, but and don't re- don't forget though that one of the reasons I'm not too too excited is that next year they're supposed to be introducing the off peak right. and peak pricing. Great. And so then if you have a category one hotel near you, which is sort of a requirement to do this anyway, um, then you could probably find off peak nights to book at 3,500 per night. Of course, that's not relevant to this year if you're seeking, seeking status for this year to, so that you'll have it at the beginning of next year. But um, if you can wait, that might be a better, better now, way to go. Now, what if Hyatt were to get crazy and say, okay, we're going to give double elite night credits. Then would Ooh. it be worth mattress running if they said yeah. double elite night credits for this window and it, it overlaps with this promo so you get two elite nights? Right. That's not an unrealistic scenario either, no. I don't think. I don't think so. I mean, I, I, th- I yeah. think probably if it were to happen, my thought is it would probably happen with higher-end brands. Like They've done that before with Andaz. Right? Uh, they've said uh-huh. you know, double elite qualifying nights just for that brand. So I, I don't necessarily know the Category 1 Hyatts are going to qualify, but let's imagine a world where they do. Would it then be worth mattress running to you? Or would you still say, no, nah, manufacturer spent? I mean, I'd have to do the math, but I, I, I think probably, you know, that, that's where it gets to where the, the ease of just like spending points that you hopefully have already would outweigh, in my mind, the, uh, the um, you know, annoying process of the manufacturing spend, <clears throat> excuse me, so and the cost. So if, so if they double <laughs> up on elite nights, then, then they start to, you know, if they sweeten the pot a little bit, sweeten the deal kind of spice things up, then maybe you'd take that for a mattress run. Right, yeah, right. At this so, so, so just if we, so there's lots of ifs and buts and blah, blah, blah. But, but I think for this segment, we just have to say, no. is this deal mattress run worthy? We're saying no. No, no. All right, so that out of the way, then that brings us, I think, to the main event this week. Main event. The Amex Clawbacks. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sound of Amex clawing those points right back from people. So Amex has not really been very MS friendly this last year and change. And a lot of people think you can't MS at all on Amex cards, which hasn't been the case, but unfortunately got a lot of people into trouble uh, recently. So what are they clawing back and why? Right. So it appears to be that what they're clawing back are, are points earned during this bonus promotion of uh, grocery spend. So, so there are a bunch of Amex cards that have been earning extra points for grocery, the most exciting of which has been the Hilton cards that earn 12 points per dollar uh, and get you uh, also towards lifetime status and, and whatnot. Um, but also Delta cards and Marriott cards have all had bonuses on grocery spend and people have been seeing, even when they first saw those points appear on their, <laughs> when they logged in, later they saw them pulled out. So I have a kind of a theory about Amex and their relationship with manufactured spend. And, and I think you might be onto something with this theory. I think this is a pretty- Because you know ahead of time even I before do, I say it. I, I do. Well, well, because you shared it with me. So I know what the theory I did. is. I did. <laughs> I think so it's a good theory. I'm going <laughs> to, we'll let, we'll let our listeners decide if this is a good right. theory or not. So uh, if you think it's a good theory, uh, give us five stars in uh, whatever your <laughs> podcast platform is. Should you leave a review? If you think it's a bad theory- good stuff <laughs> right if you think it's a bad theory just don't review us and we'll take that into account no no no. Okay. if you think it's a bad theory give us five stars for bad theories and a positive <laughs> review for doing a great job with bad theories there's no no need not to review there just, okay you're right it's still you're five right. stars so so, so here, five here's, my, here's my yeah here's my theory that that amex has a sort of unofficial policy that it's actually okay to manufacture or spend with their cards as long as there's no bonus earnings going on. And so, I mean, no welcome bonus from a new credit card, no promotion bonus, no Delta MQMs from big spend and so on, right? right. So I think there's, there's exceptions where they haven't yet applied that uh, approach. Like I, I think they still have been giving people with Hilton cards the free night after however much spent $15,000 spend yeah. in certain cards, that kind so. of thing. But you know, 
I, I think if this theory is true, then that might be next on the chopping block. Whereas the Forex spend at grocery stores that you get with the Amex Gold card might be safe because that's a standard benefit of the card and it's capped at right. the $25,000 spend. So you can't really abuse it like crazy. Um, so, th- so, so that's my theory, that they're not going to claw back Amex Gold Forex or, you know, every uh, Blue Business Plus 2X, you know, those things that are standard. But I think the next thing that will be on the chopping block are the things like free nights that, that up until now we've been earning. Now, I know that there were at least a dozen listeners who just cursed your name for making a prediction because they know your <laughs> prediction track record has been this year. And they say, oh, Greg, why did you have to say that after I capped out the 25K on the gold card? Oh, oh. <laughs> that's, uh, that's cool. You know what? I think, I think my, my bad prediction streak was pre-COVID. It was. It I was mean, pre-COVID. I think I've done. So, done so well I've, been, I've been saying since COVID, right? Now, just to bring up a recent example, I've been saying – we're going to see these big hotel promos. We're <laughs> right. finally now seeing them, right? Right, we are. And yeah, it took a little while, but, but it's happening. And so, no, I, I, I think I, I got over that curse. The, the <laughs> I think you curse. did. I think you did. <laughs> I think you did. Yeah, and I think you're right. I think this, this, this theory makes a lot of sense because we have seen that pretty consistently out of Amex that if you're working on a new welcome bonus or an authorized user bonus or that sort of thing, any kind of an extra bonus that they're adding, throwing your way. They definitely don't seem to like to see any kind of gift card purchases mixed in there. But if you're just doing everyday spend or, or everyday manufactured spending at 1x or at whatever the normal bonus categories are when they're capped, I haven't really heard of any issues with that kind of activity. They've been okay with it. Yeah. So, yeah. so I, I think that's true. And, and, and if I had easy liquidation available to me in the you know post-COVID world, I would be happy to put that theory to the test right away. Uh, I'm going to try to put that theory to the test anyway in the relatively near future as I get some of my liquidation options back. But, um, but a- at this point, I think that that's probably a good theory. I would probably still feel safe, and I do still feel safe uh, using the gold card, and I will still use the gold card uh, at grocery stores for all of my related grocery spent. Um, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm glad I, I actually was regretting that I hadn't gone a little harder with the Hilton 12 X. And then I started to hear people weren't getting the points on their statements at all. And I, I suddenly didn't feel as bad that I hadn't gone harder on the Hilton card. And, and then I started to hear that points were posting, or at least I, that's what I thought. And then of course things turned again and, and people started getting those points taken away or or people never got them awarded at all so anyway you slice it yeah that it really stinks I, and i think it's kind of unfair you know if you're going to offer the the bonus category then you know, i don't know you cap it then right cap and they did cap it with the marriott card and they right. still clawed back points yeah so, yeah i think i think right. that's a I, I agree with you cap cap it and and don't enforce these things you know it's just yeah I mean, cap it at whatever you... you think is a reasonable amount of money for people to spend and, and yeah and then chop it off there and, and whether they spend yeah. that on groceries or they spend it on whatever else they want to spend at the grocery store that they can use their credit card to buy i i think that that uh that ought to ought to be okay but of course they didn't so, ask me. so so amex should should look at what chase does because they have right. their act together and they, they cap all these promotions they, they do and they don't claw the <laughs> so points at, at the risk of uh, having to eat our words again next week, so you know, I just I just tossed up a softball for Chase to to put out a uncapped promo and uh, then to claw everything back. So the, right, the net right. result is not great, but no, I don't like that. I don't like that net result at all. <laughs> no, <laughs> you know, and I, I, somebody asked this just the other day on the live broadcast about how much they can spend safely on a card that earns a bonus category is the Chase Inc. cash card. Mm -hmm. Of course has that cap. And we said that, you know, what we've said before is that when the issuer sets a limit, that usually means that that's a safe amount to do that. They expect you to spend that much. And that's why they've limited it at that amount. And they seem to be comfortable with that. So usually that means it's safe. Uh, So uh, that seems reasonable to me, but like we said, apparently that wasn't the case with the Marriott cards this time around. I'm still willing to put my money where my mouth is and, and give it a shot on the MX gold card. Cause I, I think that that'll be okay. Yeah. Yeah. Time will tell. Time will tell. We'll find out. Cause, because we're never going to get a written confirmation no. of this theory. <laughs> it's no. just going to be based no. on data points. 
of our own and others. Um, so yeah, so that was the main event. I guess uh, the next thing, I don't know if this will be a regular segment, but I, I'm kind of playing with this as an idea that that a segment is where we, it's it's us picking on each other's posts of the week. Right. So, like picking something from a post and saying, eh, I don't <laughs> think you are right or or <laughs> what really that that was insane. Um, so so we need a name for this too. We need a name for yeah. I don't. I I guess we'll. I, we're going to have to either get some reader feedback or we're going to have to, you know, go to our uh, creative director and see if they have any. Uh, oh, yes. Yeah. Our creative director should any be creative able to. solutions. That's right. What are we paying <laughs> our the big bucks for if not to come up with names for things? Catchy names. Um, yeah. Catchy um, Instagrammable names. I, um, I, I think that our listeners are going to come up with better names than our creative director will. Though. Oh, wow. Not, not that I don't trust the our creative director. I, I, sit no, it's burn. Yet, Ouch. It's the other way around. It's the other way around. <laughs> I think I think she's going to come up with great names, uh-huh. but I think our listeners are I do too. super creative. They are, and 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 they're going to come up with even better stuff. So I'm, raise I'm the really bar. excited. Yeah, very good. I can't I can't wait to hear. So so boy, we're giving them a lot of homework here. But anyway, got to work uh, hard if you want to listen to our show. You know, you got to pay your dues somehow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Do you want to start, or do you want? To- uh, well, so you know, I uh, so the first one that we have down here. I don't know yeah. if I actually feel like I'm picking on you with it, but I, I, I have a, a question that I thought about as I read your post. Okay. This week. So you, you wrote about uh, why you don't have a two X everywhere card in your wallet because, of course, you got the Bank of America Premium Rewards, the Platinum Honors, the two point six two percent back everywhere. And so, if you were to use a two X card instead of earning two point six two percent cash back, as we've written about before, you're effectively paying 1.31 cents per point. So that's right. kind of a high price to pay, especially if you have lots and lots and lots of points already in City Thank You or Amex Membership Rewards, et cetera. It seems like a high price to pay. Like it's it's mm-hmm. too much. And, and, and that's what you said in the post. And, and if you want to read more about that. It wasn't just like, especially because it was because I have a lot of points in those other programs well, already. Okay, that's what you said. That, that's, that's what that's, that's that was the premise of the that post. That was the premise of the post. Yes, yeah, so it was because. <laughs> All right. So this is the part where you're picking on. This is the part where, part where I'm picking on you a little part. bit. But but is that not still true? If you had zero points, so if you had no city thank you points, or you had no MX membership rewards points, you used them all, you gave them away, you transferred them, you lost them, you got shit, whatever it is, and you had the opportunity <laughs> to buy those points. From starting from zero, would you pay one point three one cents each to buy a hundred thousand city points or a million MX points? I mean, would you pay one point three one cents per point for those? Okay, so so you're you you framed in a certain way, but but the point is the question is, does it ever make sense for someone to use a two X card if well, yes. they have the option of getting two point six two percent? Thank you. Everywhere? I'm sorry that and I so, didn't that, that and, I didn't. I, I didn't say but, it that way, but yes, that's, no, that's what but, I'm but, asking. And, but you asked it in a way that, that makes it harder to say yes. Because <laughs> when, when, you, when you wrote this idea to me of, of what we would talk about, you, know, you, you sort of framed it that second way more of like, should you use a 2X card if you don't have points? And my answer was going to be, yes, let's move on to the next topic. <laughs> 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 and, and, and the reason the answer was yes is because uh, it's the only way you're going to get to having enough points for those uh, big outsized awards that you're going to want someday. And so you, if you want to get that ANA round trip business class to wherever for a very reasonable amount of points, um, first of all, you'd read one of next post to see what, <laughs> what those uh, point <laughs> options, options are. are. But, um, like you could go all around the world for as low as, what is it? 115,000. Yeah. I mean, 115, like yeah, I think you could probably even do it a little bit less depending on how, you know, what you're theoretically possible where you're do go. less. Yeah, and yeah, it might be more if you have more segment, or if you have, go a little more. Distance, right. I think I showed still, like six stops around a lot that, of the world for 115k. Yeah. For 115, which is cheaper than most program, and this is business class, business class, cheaper yeah. than most most programs would cost would charge to go to Europe and back right. from the U.S. in business right. class. Right. Um, so that's a just one example of many that ANA has, and and I'm picking picking ANA because they have a plethora of sense. good deals. Right. Right. Okay. So. So from that point of view, my answer is yes. But when you frame it differently, 
<laughs> I shouldn't have a different answer, right? But the way right. you framed it was Same like, question. would you buy? Would you buy these tons of points? You're starting from zero. If you were offered uh, by all these points, they only cost one point three one cents. Would you buy them? And um, I mean, these are not hundred thousand miles. These points. are these are transferable points. Transferable we're points. talking about buying. So let's say by a hundred, um, somebody says, "Hey, I'll sell you a hundred thousand city points for thirteen hundred dollars." You got zero city points. You gonna spend thirteen hundred bucks on that? You know, that's that's harder, isn't it? So, like, it does seem I mean, that way. the the other part of the assumption I think is that you don't have like awards in mind that immediately, right? Of course, like yes. uh, obviously, if you have obviously, them in mind, yes. you'd be like, "Well, yeah, obviously, I'll do that because that's gonna be way cheaper than buying the tickets or any other way of buying miles." Um, that's hard. You know, I think I probably, from that point of view, I'd probably be willing to invest. And this also assuming you've got like that amount of money, kind of, of course, yeah, yeah. easily accessible, ready, over and above what you need for everyday stuff. Um, <clears throat> I think I'm, I might be willing to do that with membership rewards, but I think I'd have a harder time doing that with City. I mean, I hear you. I hear what you're saying. And, and there's definitely part of me that says, yeah, if I had none, I guess I would do that. But then there's the other part of me that says, well, I don't know that those 2X cards are as hot as they sound. I'm not saying you can't earn any other points. I mean, you could still earn points from welcome bonuses or from category bonuses that are higher than 2X. But, but would I, am I willing to pay 1.31 cents each for points day to day? I don't know if it matters how many points you already have. That seems kind of high to me to pay per point. I mean, yes, mm -hmm. like you said, if you got an award to book tomorrow and it's going to save you money, of course you'd spend the 1.31 cents right. to save you over what you're going to pay. But on a day-to-day -day, like spending kind of a scenario where you got to decide, okay, I got to go to the mechanic today. I got to pay a bill. It's not going to you know, trigger any bonus categories. I got to spend $1,000 to get new whatever it is at the, the mechanic. Am I going to use the card that gets 2.62% cash back or two points per dollar? You know, you're looking at, at giving up cash in order to earn those points. I don't, I don't know if it ever makes sense to use the 2X cards. <laughs> All right. But, 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 okay. In order to get the 2.62% everywhere, you have to have $100,000 in investments around. with either Merrill Edge or Bank of America, right? Right. Um, and so... We can kind of assume that most people who have that card and the 2.62% earnings with that card have a fair amount of disposable income. And so the, the excitement of, you know, getting cash back might be less, you think, huh? Quite a bit less than the excitement of the big win. And the big win is when you book that first class eddie hod trip or whatever it is right all right all right okay all right i'll give you that sure so it feels yeah. it feels more fun and i mean i'm with you i'll use my points for things that are worth way more than what the cash back would buy i just think that when you look at it that way it starts to make me wonder i don't know does that card if you can access it does it make the the 2x cards kind of obsolete for you uh i certainly wouldn't tell someone who has decided that they would rather keep the cash than buy the points. Because again, effectively you're buying the points by using that instead of the cash back card. I wouldn't fault somebody who decides that the cash is more valuable to them. That, that, sure. Not sure. a bad, not a bad Agreed. decision. Agreed. Agreed. It's just not as much fun. All right. Right, so that, right, right, right. That, that, that so, sort of so, answers that. All right. So my turn. So okay. you, you posted, you posted a answer to a question that was asked in our ask us anything segment. I did which was uh, I've got city points that, that I think my account might, might get shut down. I need to transfer all my points to an airline program. Which one, if, I could, if you could only do one, which would it be? And, and you, you said about answering that question, not just for city, but in case anyone was in that position with Amex and Chase. Right. And uh, to make it more fun, you didn't allow for the possibility of sprinkling points around no. to different programs. It was you like, pick you have one. To put them all in one basket. One basket. Right? Eggs in like, one basket. Even, even though like we might tell people, if you have that, money, to do you that. might want to put some here right. and some there, but it would right, right, right. overcomplicate the question. Right? Of course. So, of course. All right. well, I, so I wasn't looking to make the argument that there's a lot of good transfer partners. We all know that, but you know, right. if you're, if you're, if you're going to pick no, one, I, if somebody's like, totally all right, fair. one, which one? Right. Exactly. Right. Totally fair. That's what totally I said. Fair. Okay. So, so for Chase, I totally agree with you. you. You said, if I'm remembering right, yeah. you said 
Hyatt would be a good choice, but as long as we could cash out uh, for 1.5 cents each with cash, you take that. Right. And as long as that's an easy option, any other option means you're buying those points for 1.5 cents each. Which is more yeah. expensive than what we were just talking about. Exactly. Exactly. So, you know, so just go back to that previous conversation to say whether you would ever buy any of those <laughs> for 1.5. So, so that we're in agreement, right? Right. Um, for uh, City, you said Air France. I did. Which was not, not <laughs> Which what anybody was shocked expecting. shocked me. Right? No, no. I did, I did not expect on your that. Radar. No. The, well, the reason I didn't expect it is, is, you know, part of this whole premise is that, I mean, you don't know what you're going to be doing with the miles. So you need to go to a program that's flexible and, which Air France is, I'll give you that, and where it's easy to keep the points alive for a long period of time. And Air France is not that. So it's, it's not as hard as ANA or impossible to keep them Singapore, alive, which, which are both that, impossible, yeah. but you have to actually either have the Air France credit card, which, okay, it's probably not that hard to get it, but it's also not that great of a card. Yeah, that's so desirable kind of to have, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, or you have to uh, actually credit a flight to Air France. So you have to do that so it could be a Delta flight. I'll give you that. It's not that hard to do maybe, but right. you got to do once that every, like every two years, right? Every two years. Yeah. Yeah. Once, once every yeah. two. I mean, you do know. You, I, do you need that headache? Uh, do I need that headache? Not necessarily. But what I gain in choosing Air France over everybody else, I think makes it worthwhile. So no, I mean, right now I, do, I don't book a paid Delta flight once every two years. I mean, I, 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 maybe I booked a paid flight to go see you in Michigan at some point, maybe possibly even then I think it was an award. I'm pretty sure I booked it as an award. ticket. So I don't think I booked a paid Delta ticket since like 1986 when I was, <laughs> I didn't pay for it. So, yeah. <laughs> so, so I, yeah, I mean, I'm not a, not a paid Delta ticket kind of guy. So it's definitely yeah. not my normal routine. However, on the flip side, would I be willing to put up with a paid Delta flight, especially if I can find a cheap option and use chase ultimate rewards points for it once every two years in order to keep those points alive for a while. Yeah. I mean, first of all, I'd have the points valid for at least two years from today. And then all I got to do is one cheap flight one way and then credit it to Air France in order to, to be able to keep them alive. Not convenient. All, all for the benefit of getting a, a points in a program that's like, okay. It's okay, yeah. Well, <laughs> and here's the thing. So my other, my other, my other options with City are a bunch of options yeah. that I don't know if they're going to be around much longer. You know, I mean, right. I, I hope they all are. And I think that all of these airlines are going to make it. But I am like 99.5% sure that France is not going to allow Air France to collapse. I got to think it's a pride thing of nothing else, right? I mean, they're not going to let Air France. For sure. So, For sure. so that's going to be around. And I kind of like the fact that they have variable pricing. Now, that's an odd sentence to say out loud because, of course, any other time you would have ever heard, had me talking about this, I would have said, oh, variable pricing kind of stinks because you can't get great value. But now, given the fact that cash prices are really low, I'm at least hopeful that when demand is low, that maybe we're going to see some great deals. We see some good promo awards now and then. So I know there's a good chance that I'll get at least decent value out of the points. Maybe not amazing, but much better than if I transfer them to Avianca and Avianca goes out of business. Now, Please, the six readers who are listening to, or the six listeners listening to this, who are going to be like, oh my goodness, Avianca's going out of business. They're, I don't think they're going out of business. I don't really think they're going to. But at the same time, I don't know that they're going to make it. Who knows what it's going to be like six months from now. I'm very confident Air France will make it through. So I don't think the points will become worthless anytime soon. So I get that security. I can definitely book Delta flights with it. I'm not a big Delta person myself, but they certainly fly everywhere in the U S so I, they could be useful for domestic flights. If I end up doing mostly domestic travel, there'll be a fair enough price anyway, using air France to book Delta flights, Hawaii. Again, it's not a Turkish, but it's not a horrible value flying to Hawaii using uh, air France flying blue. And if Europe opens back up and someday says we're welcome to go again, then I might be able to pick up a promo award and get there for 30 or 40 or 50,000 points one way. And, and that's, Again, a fair value. Yes, there's going to be some surcharges, but a relatively fair value. So I, th I feel like it's a compromise. It's not going to be yeah, the sweet yeah. spot that Virgin Atlantic is going to give me. It's not going to be like the Turkish Miles and Smiles 7,500 point thing. But 
if Virgin Atlantic and Turkish fail, Air France is still going to be there. All right. All right. And um, who was your uh, Amex transfer? I, I really gonna... wanted to say ANA, but I, I couldn't because of, uh, because of the hard expiration policy. That, that right. makes that kind of tough mm -hmm. and no other way to top off the account. So Avios is what I said, because then, it, oh, right. then I would still have Chase as a potential to transfer to Avios and I can use their shopping portal to earn more Avios and keep them alive. And of course you have Marriott. Yeah, too, Avios are easy to keep alive. Yeah. So, so that seemed like a decent option because again, I, they have a decent award chart. Not great. Iberia has a nice sweet spot though, 34,000 off peak business class to, uh, to, to Spain from a few cities in the U S. So they got a, at least one good sweet spot there, a premium economy, economy, not bad either. And then your short hauls within the United States. And it just so happens that here on the East coast, there's a lot of options with American where I can get round trip for about 17,000 points with Iberia or if I'm flying direct, which I do fly to Chicago a couple times a year usually, it's like 7,500 points with British Airways and cancelable up to 24 hours in advance. Seems like a good amount of convenience. Again, not the best award chart ever. Not bad. 10% of the mileage uh, fee for, for lap infants if you're booking through British Airways. So that's attractive for me because I'm going to have a lap infant for the next two years. So, so there were enough reasons for Avios to, again, just like Air France, they're not my favorite transfer partner. Like they're not. Yeah. If, yeah. I'm not saying that if I could only have one Amex transfer partner forever and ever, Avios would be it. But if I had to transfer out all of my points today, mid-pandemic, Avios would be it. Right. What right. Would you, but what, what, okay. did you pick, what did you pick for membership rewards? You, you, you confused me because you, you, you didn't <laughs> so pick I what commented, I So I commented on your post and I right. said I would, I would do City to Virgin Atlantic. And right. that's because I fly Delta a lot and I have great prices on that. Primarily. As, as long and as they're, they're easy to business keep, and they easy don't to keep alive. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Well, anyway, who knows about devaluation with any of the programs? <laughs> well, right. But, but, but with Virgin, you've got like a different award chart with each partner. And I mean, who knows what those partnerships are? I, I feel like Virgin Atlantic is a questionable call right now. Do you? Okay. All right. I do. Well, you know what? I, worst case, I'll, I'll <laughs> spend another week on, on Necro. On Necro. Worst all the case. Points. All right. All right. So yeah, Virgin Atlantic. <laughs> um, okay. So then the... Um, I wonder if they're they're probably not open over this uh, pandemic. I'm guessing. I mean, I would. I haven't that. really paid. Attention I would ask you that. <laughs> you would ask me, yeah. And I <laughs> don't know. Richard hasn't reached out to hasn't, me lately. Hasn't, hasn't let you know. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> um, so then, for membership rewards, uh, I can't remember. If, I think I. Said I remember that, what you said. Go ahead. You know, you said aeroplane. Well, uh, you said well, okay. did, did I not say that I might do the 1.25? You did. You did say. I, th you, I think I said. I think did. I said I would do 1.25. But if that wasn't an option, I'm thinking Aeroplan. So cool. Aeroplan is easy to keep alive. Uh, works on all Star Alliance uh, carriers. You're right. They don't have the best award chart, but they have a good-ish. I mean, there's there's some decent prices. I guess so they're not. You know, yeah, not incredible, but. Um, it's definitely a gamble, and I sometimes I like to gamble with points. I'm not like I'm not like a gambler with money, but with points I like to gamble. Like, and 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 there, there's sort of an interesting thing happening. Which see, is, I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna hop on that to, in a second. Go ahead. Go yeah, ahead. no, please do. They're supposed to have a brand new program by the end of the year. I kind of doubt they're gonna stick to that, but but at some point they're gonna have a brand new program, and it's like a, a box of chocolates, right? You yeah, don't know what you're gonna, gonna get. get. Um, but what we do know is they've recently added two partners uh, for booking awards. Uh, so, and and uh, Eddie had being a pretty exciting partner to add. Uh, so uh, they're going in a in a very positive direction about adding more partners, and it it makes me feel like maybe some of their promises for how good the new program was going to be. Maybe some of them are true. Maybe, you know, maybe they're really out Possible. to create a program that's going to get a lot of good press and and have a lot of happy customers. That's what I'm kind of rolling the dice on when I when I say aeroplane. I mean, that's not necessarily a bad strategy because they they did debut the partnership with Etihad recently, and they announced just this week the partnership with Azul, the Brazilian airline Azul. And in the email where they let us know about that, they made it clear that this is one of more announcements like it to come. So it sounds like they're going to have some more partnerships coming. I have no idea what those are going to be, but it does sound like they have something else up their sleeves. So I think 
you could be right there. However, however, let me back up. You said you're not really a gambler with money, <laughs> but you gamble with points. Now, I'd say you're a pretty bad gambler if you're picking Aeroplan. <laughs> yeah. Okay. All right. Because, okay, 55,000 points each way business class to Europe or like 80,000 points each way to Australia, let's say. So if you're going to gamble, why not gamble with ANA? I mean, the gamble with well, ANA. We already is talked you, about that. The gamble is you got to use them. Points are going to disappear years. before I get to use them. <laughs> I mean, you're not going to get to use them in the next three years. If you're going to be a gambler, come on now. You're, you're not willing to gamble that you're going to travel somewhere served by a Star Alliance airline in the next three years. I know you already lost that gamble once, but you lost it half because. Well, of the not pandemic. only that. So, so, so I'm sitting on all those ANA points that I already have right. that I've got to spend. Yeah. So now, now I'd just add more. So, so now I'd have to not only travel that much but double or, or so you know, i mean then you'd be how many forced points to book one about. of those round the world trips right you'd finally be forced to right. go ahead and two or three <laughs> right you'd i mean you'd have to you'd, <laughs> you'd lock yourself in so i mean you give yourself three more yeah. years now okay so you've gone almost three years without booking a star alliance award via ana which just kind of blows my mind when you look at the fact that it's 88k round trip to europe 105k round trip off peak to Australia, 105k round trip versus the 160 that Aeroplan would charge you, right? So 105k round trip off peak there, 75k round trip off peak to Japan. I mean, we've written about these things before. And so if you have not found a way to use that in the past three years, what are the chances you're going to go three more years without being able to use any of those sweet spots? I think there's a good chance that you'll be able to use one of those in the next three years. If you're going to gamble, gamble with ANA. Come on now, Aeroplan just isn't that competitive. <laughs> you're going to pay the same fuel surcharges either way, basically. Maybe even a little bit less on ANA these days. I think ANA. And if you if you're going to gamble, ANA, Aeroplan. Yeah, yeah, uh, uh, yeah. So, Greg so, so, so yeah, I mean, I mean you might be so, right. The, the new program could be awesome, and I could be eating my words. Well, there's also, the, I th I think that there's just a good chance that two and a half years from now. I'd be writing a post about like, <laughs> what the heck do I do with all these a and miles? <laughs> and I don't want to be in that position again. I mean, that could be, but so here's the other thing that, that, that I, I, I kind of, this makes me think to go along with it, that if we're collecting points in this miles and points hobby, without the confidence that we're going to use them within the next three years, then it's definitely time to follow your post and go to cash back, right? If you're not right. sure you're going to use them in the next exactly. three years, you should be earning cash back and investing. Well, you know, the, the other thing I, I didn't, I didn't write a lot about in, in that post because it was just sort of overkill about that topic. But I think a lot of people in this hobby are in the same position because we had booked awards that were canceled. Right. We now have not only, so not only do we have a lot of transferable points, I have a lot of specific airline points in, in a number of programs that means it's going to be quite a while before I tap any of the transferable points yeah. because it's like, I've got hundreds of thousands of United, hundreds of thousands of, of life miles and, and so on and so on. So right. anyway, um, so, yeah. So, okay. <laughs> All right. So we picked on each other a little bit there. So w one more real quick before we, we move on from picking on each other's posts. She wrote a post this yeah. week about purchase protection, about extended right. warranty and price protection and return protection and which cards actually still offer any of those things and what the limits are. And, you know, I looked at the post and I thought to myself, do you ever use this? Like, do you ever use any of those? Did you have to look it all up? Does that move the needle? Does that make you decide, okay, you know what? I'm going to put it on this card because of the purchase protection or extended warranty or blah, blah, blah. Do you ever think about that when you buy something? Well, Let's just be a more, little more blunt. What you're saying is <laughs> I just wasted a whole day of work <laughs> and promised people to do more work, to add more cards information into there because it's irrelevant. Right? No, no, no. I mean, it's not and irrelevant. So, I'm just curious for you. No, so you I think take a stand, Nick. I, no, well, I think some people <laughs> will use that. I, I think that it will be valued because people asked us about it, right? I mean, we, that was part of the people reason. People ask us it. about people it fairly regularly. It. The yeah. other thing is uh, this came up for me personally last time I bought a cell phone. So okay, there we go. Let's see. This so is what I was waiting for. The personal. So, so buying buying a cell phone, it's a big, expensive, uh, purchase, and you know, I sort of like vaguely know. Oh, there's cards that have cell phone protection. So you think, oh, maybe I should use one of those. So you look into it and say, oh no, they protect the card. I mean, they protect the phone if you use it to pay the monthly bill. It, you don't have to use them to buy the phone. Right. What you want from a uh, credit card 
when buying the phone is an extended warranty, is uh, damage protection, those kind of things that I listed in this post, right? Mm -hmm. And so it was painful to try to find that information about which cards offered what. So I, I, I think it's awesome to have it all in one place now. Now, I, I only that. have a small selection of cards so far, but I, I picked out ones very purposely that are popular cards. So uh, people who have the Sapphire Reserve or the Amex Gold uh, or Amex Platinum or City Premier can go there and look and see you know, what they offer right now. And uh, so you'll, so I was surprised, like, so I sort of generally remembered that City had cut out all their, all of their protections, but so I was pleasantly surprised to see that some of their cards still have uh, the extended warranty and it's a very good one. Two years from the date that the manufactured warranty ends, whereas most are just a year. Um, I was pleasantly surprised. So maybe I can get the microphone replaced that that died on me before I switch to a new microphone today. Because I I bought that one on a city card just over a year ago. So maybe I've got an extended. It might be covered depending on which city card you use. Right. Um, Amex, some of the the Amex cards, not all of them, I had to uh, update my post, uh, not only offer, I think they all offer theft and damage protection for like 90 days. Some of them, platinum card and gold card, for example, uh, and all those four and fifty dollar cards as well uh, offer um, loss protection as well for the first ninety days. So you just lose it; uh, they'll they'll cover that. Um, and else? that's that's a benefit that actually I will admit that I, I put a purchase on a platinum card, a business platinum card, specifically for that because uh, I was going to South Africa a couple of years ago. I wrote a post. I think the title of it was a uh, buy to rent, uh, something about getting uh, travel gear without remorse, without buyer's remorse, so that kind of thing. And I, I had bought an expensive lens for my camera to go on a safari and I bought it with a business platinum because of the, of the loss protection and the accidental damage protection. Cause I thought if this gets taken out of my check bag, perhaps, or I actually, yep. I don't know if they would have covered that, but, uh, but if I get dropped, robbed, blah, 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 then I've got some protection for 90 days. Right. Right. Um, and then there's a return protection where if you buy something and, and the store won't accept the return, I don't know how common that is, but I, you know, I know certain types of items mm-hmm. uh, sellers aren't happy to, to accept back. And yeah. so that gives you more time to return it. Uh, number of cards offer that. Not as many as the first two. And then you had already written a post near the end of last year about all the cards well, you had updated your post near the end of last year. The 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 cards that that offer um, the uh, 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 price, price protection, protection, where mm-hmm. where you buy it and then the price drops and they give you the difference. Last year, like almost all the major issuers dropped that feature, mm-hmm. uh, but but there's still uh, quite a few cards, including some popular cards like the uh, number of Capital One cards. Um, trying to think of, oh yeah the united business card so Oddly. some sort of like random cards yeah. that that uh, still offer it so i just took the information from your post put it in a nice little table and made that more accessible as well and uh, one of the only cards so far that span that that provide all four of those protections is the fee free racket and visa <laughs> Which ups the ante a little bit on that card, huh? It does. It does. So, you know, I had lost interest in the card when it, (laughs) this card keeps coming up over and over. Right, it does. Yeah. When when they stopped giving us 3X going through their portal to buy gift cards from giftcards.com and gift card mall, kind of doesn't matter anymore now that. (laughs) Right, now (laughs) that that you can't buy very many gift gift card mall. Right, right. Yeah. Um, So, uh, but. You know, if you're actually buying things, which is what we're talking about here, right. and if you could buy them through the portal, then you're still get, you're getting 3x membership rewards if you have your account set up right for that by by using that card on top of whatever the portal offers. So you're probably earning at least 5x membership rewards, probably more than probably that more, per yeah. dollar, and you're getting all these protections. They're they're not like the top of the line for each of these. Like, you know, it might offer a little bit less. Like the one that stood out to me, the warrant, manufacturer's warranty, it doesn't offer 12 months extra. What it offers is it doubles it up to 12 months extra. 
So if you have a three month manufactured warranty, you just get a total of six months. I see. I see. But if you, uh, and on the flip side, if you have a three year manufacturer warranty, then does it give you the fourth year? Does it give you like 12 extra months? It'll give you the fourth year. The fourth yeah. year. Yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what I thought. So, so, and by the way, the Ritz card also is one to add to that because the Ritz card, uh, shares the same protections as the Sapphire Reserve. So it still has return protection and I, whatever the other ones were that were on there on the, the Sapphire Reserve card. So that's one to add the next round. Um, but, but my question kind of stands. I think all of that information is good and I definitely agree that having it all in one place is super useful now for anybody who's at that point where you're trying to make a purchase and you're like, wait a second, which card is going to give me this? The return protection, by the way, is one that I definitely think about sometimes when I'm buying something and I know there's no returns. There are definitely times where I have accepted a worse payout, like on my Ritz card, to know that I have the security yeah. to be able to return it if it doesn't yeah. work out. So same, I, I think that's same, same thing is with like buying airfare, right? Like right. sometimes we accept the lower uh, return in, 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 in the rewards because we, we want to get that little bit of extra protection. But my question stands, does that happen for you? And you did mention an example with the mm -hmm. cell phone. So apparently, yeah. yes. Yeah. Are so I think things? like, so for example, I think I bought the cell phone pro with a platinum card, I think, because I, I had looked up enough to know that it offered what, I can't remember which, which of those four protections I was looking <laughs> right, up, but right. um, you know, it, it had one of them and, and uh -huh. uh, a good amount of it more than the others. So sure. I, I took that. Yeah. Uh, but, but now having this chart, it'll be so much easier when I have to make a decision like that. That's only example right. I can think of. Well, no, that is a good example. It's a good. So if you have an expensive purchase like that coming up and you want to, to kind of compare that, it's definitely a post to see the link will be in the description. It'll be in the, uh, the description, whether this is on YouTube or on a podcast platform, depending on how you're checking out the show this week. So be able to check that out and bookmark it so you can come back to it later. There you go. So I think that right. brings us to our final segment of the day. The question of the week. The and question of the so week. question of the week this week comes from our Frequent Miler Insiders group. It comes from Jared in our Frequent Miler Insiders group. And the question Facebook itself, group. our Facebook group, clear. yes. Thank you. Fa Frequent Miler Insiders Facebook group. So if you're on Facebook and you're not part of our group, you can just type in the search box, Frequent Miler Insiders, and click to join. You have to answer a question. That's just to verify that you're a human and not a robot a of some really sort. really tough question. Right, right. It's, it's, you have to where, think about. <laughs> where in the world do you want to go? Which, and, uh, which, all jokes aside, may be harder to answer today than it, than it was. <laughs> oh, but <laughs> so if, if you if you can name a place that plausibly sounds like a real place, right, we'll probably let you in. Probably let you in. Yeah, it's, uh, <laughs> it's, it's not a trick question, right? We, we no, don't need you to get, sometimes people get extra creative. I feel like they they think that we need to be be like impressed with the location. <laughs> That's true. Yeah, I'm like I, I, you, you could have said you know, wherever. I don't want to insult Right, you. exactly. The person who's in New York City got in just <laughs> right. like you did. Right, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So it doesn't have to be anything. But you join the group because then you can ask and answer questions in the group and get help from other people. And so that's why I wanted to highlight one of the questions that came from there this week. Yeah. Because this question actually was from a, almost a couple of weeks ago now, I think, and there's been an update to it. Uh, and so I didn't know the answer right off the top of my head. I know what my advice would be. So I'm curious what your advice would be. And then we'll go with what the update has been. So Jared cool. asked, thank you points question. What happens if thank you points were shared with me, those points were used to book a flight and that flight got canceled or refunded? The travel center is saying I'm going to receive my original form of payment. So I assume I'll get thank you points but are they going to expire in 90 days or something? Now, for those unfamiliar, you can share thank you points between people. Like I could send thank you points to Greg and Greg could use them to book whatever he wants. But when you share points like that, they expire early, 60 days or 90 days or whatever it is. They, they expire quickly. And so Greg has to use them to book something right away. And the question here is the points got shared, the flight got booked, but then the flight got canceled because hello, COVID. And so now what happens? Do they get yeah. the, Do they wow. get it? So... I mean, all right. So what should happen should be that you should get, e either you should get points back. Well, I, it has to be you. You, you, get, you, get, you should get the points back that were used to pay for it and they shouldn't be expiring. They, they should, like that would be the right thing for a company to do. Right. The right, but and this, when we say the right thing, we mean the customer friendly thing, the good right. thing, the good human thing. But this is Citibank. City. This, is, this city. is city. And so what I expect to happen is that the points had an expiration date when they were first transferred over. Mm -hmm. And so what I expect to happen would be, let's, let's say the 60 days or 90 days, whatever it is, are already up. 
already up, right? Those, point, let's say those points were transferred in February. 69 days has been up for a while now. The right. It wasn't until like next week, and now the flight is canceled. Right. But- so what I expect, what I expect City to do is put those expired thank you points back into his account, but they're expired, so they're gone. That's what I expect City to do. And so far, that's exactly what's happened. <laughs> <Really>? <laughs> so far, that's it. Exactly. Oh, so got, like, nice. A small nice. piece of the points back, but missing the large chunk of the points that oh, wait, roughly some- correspond. Well, because of course. They, they, they took, so I, I think the number was 65,000 points. So they used 65,000 points to book and let's say 40,000 of those points uh, came from somebody else. Okay. All right. So it wasn't all from the other person. Exactly. Exactly. So, they, so they've so oh, far gotten man. back the part that was their points to begin with, but it seems right. like those points right. that have gotten shared immediately expired because they were past their expiration date as far as. Right. Uh, I mean, the, the, the other right thing to do would be to, to send the points all the way back to the original person who, who shared them. But there's so many complications in that. I, I wouldn't want them to actually try that because points could have come from multiple sources. The original sharer could have canceled their city accounts. You know, there's so many reasons that that doesn't make sense. But yeah, hopefully uh, he's calling them. And yeah, he said he needs to call and, and try to get that resolved. Another reader chimed in, meanwhile, to say that they had a similar situation where they uh, they booked they have like a player two in their household and they booked a hotel. They shared points over and booked a hotel and then had to cancel it because of the whole COVID thing. And they said that when the points came back in, they indeed did come back in, but they showed an expiration date, like a coming expiration date. And so they cashed them all in for gift cards, not wanting to chance that the points were going to expire quickly. So they were able to, to do that. Now uh, they said that they had transferred December 24th and then the booking got canceled March 22nd. So December, I mean, that was like two days, like they would have expired in two days. So, uh, so they were probably within two days of the 90 before they expired, I assume. So, so basically long story short is I think they're doing exactly what we would expect city to do and expiring those points, which absolutely stinks. I would definitely, definitely Jared and anybody else who's in this kind of situation, definitely call city and, you know, plead your case and, and ask for some resolution on that. And, and if they don't ask for a supervisor and see what they can do for you, uh, because that, that seems really poor. Oh, yeah, that's really poor. I mean, it, and th- the truth is there, there might not have been anyone who, there's probably not, right. no one who designed it that way. It's just right. not something that comes up enough for them to have fixed yet. I mean, now it probably does come up a lot, but probably a lot. Uh, in, the, and, in the past, it probably didn't. Not, not and there's a chance that it's happened enough now that maybe they mm-hmm. have a, a means of reversing it if you call in. And, and sometimes that's the case with things like this, where they'll be able to see, oh yeah, this is what happened. We can fix that. But they haven't actually done anything with the IT system to change it because it's not a long-term change. It's the kind of thing that's going to affect people for a few months here. And after that, it's going to be such a rare issue that... So, but let's be real for a second. What's okay. the chance of anyone on the phone understanding the problem? Oh, I mean like 8% maybe. So you're going to have to call probably at least 10 times to have an 80% this, chance yeah, of getting this, this fixed. This is painful. Yeah, this is, it is. This is going to be painful. It is. I, I recommend calling late at night because you know, late at night, A, you're going to get less competition from people trying to call in. The phones won't be as jammed. I've, I've gotten through faster to a human late at night. I also recommend always calling the number on the back of the most premium card that you have with the bank. So if you have a Prestige card, use that. If you have a Thank You Premier and that's the most premium, use that. Don't call you know, using whatever, like your Rewards Plus card or whatever else, because you'll oftentimes get routed to a higher agent or whatever if you have one of the more premium cards. And, and also if you call late at night, sometimes you get a rep that's not even based in the United States. And I tend to find in general with most companies, those reps tend to be more uh, generous. So might be worth trying. Okay, so that's very interesting because I, I would have I would have suggested the opposite. You would have suggested so, 9 a.m. So, to get so, the most experience so, in your senior people, right? Exactly. Well, during the workday is, is when you have the people who who uh, have earned the right to have normal hours, right? <laughs> so right. hopefully they're more experienced and, and can figure out what to do here. But you're right. They might also be just have been in the job for a long, long time. That doesn't mean they know anything. 
Well, and you might be on hold for two hours to get to them. So I guess it. I, I hard yeah. to say. There's, hard to there's say. pros and cons there. Right, pros and cons. Right. So best of luck to you, Jared, and anybody else in that situation, because that really sticks. So All that, right. my friends. Let's, let's sing the goodbye song. All right, that, my friends, here. brings us to the end. Thank you guys very much for being out here with us today, listening along. If you'd like to find out more about what we've been talking about today, or you want to get email updates in the future, you want to go to thefrequentmiler.com slash subscribe. That's thefrequentmiler.com slash subscribe. If you're watching this on YouTube, please hit that subscribe button down below. Give us a like, give us a comment. If you're listening to this in podcast format, give us a like, give us a comment, give us a review, et cetera, et cetera. Thank you guys very much. We will see you guys soon. Take care. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.